Okay, so this is just going to be another video basically urging people to go, if they're in the UK especially, to actually go and buy a stab proof vest or a Kevlar vest. Um, just simply because I think it is getting to the point now where you probably ought to have one, simply due to the police not really doing their job properly of catching criminals, for the most part obviously. Um, it's just a generalisation I'm making, but obviously if you look at what's going on in London and some of the other big cities, you do start to think what are they actually doing. So, um... As I said, what I've suggested several times before and I'm still going to recommend is getting the old police vests like I've got here. Front and back Kevlar vest, normally level 2 vests, with a stab proof protection on each side of the vest. Now if you've seen all my other videos on it, I've shown you the sort of stuff that's in there. It's like a chain mail, uh, like riveted chain mail that's basically put in front of the Kevlar plate. The Kevlar plate um, or panel does a good job of stopping bullets and potentially some sort of knife blows. The chain mail does a very good job of stopping knife blows so where you can bind them together. They give you a very good level of protection. Now, a vest like this would actually protect you from pistol crossbows, full size crossbows, bows and knives, as well as some handguns. Um, the reason it stops bows and arrows and everything, because a lot of people don't think Kevlar can, is the actual chain mail level. When you have that combined with Kevlar, it does become very good. So unless somebody's actually using a bodkin or a proper armor-piercing armor piercing point with um, a bow or a crossbow, it's not really going to get through one of these vests at all. And if you're wearing other clothing with it, um, you know that's going to reduce the chance even more. And of course, you can get level three A Kevlar vests, which are better than the level two ones, but a bit bulkier, a bit heavier. But this isn't really particularly heavy. I think it's maybe between one and two kilos, shorted at your shoulders and your waist. So. Um, you know, not much issue there. So, if you want a vest like this, you can spend a lot of money and buy a brand new one. Again, it depends how much use you think you're going to get out of it. But, I think for most people, what you'd actually want to do is go on eBay, and there's probably a few other places you can buy these, and you get the ex-police ones like this is, because basically, with Kevlar, there's a health and safety aspect to it, a bit like with the masks. Well, once they get beyond a certain amount of years, they're not allowed for police use anymore. Um, so what ends up happening is they end up selling them and then just buying new vests in and over time vest technology improves so some of the liners are a bit more breathable um, some of them you know sit a bit more snugly or a bit more comfortable um, but nothing really that should mean that vest won't protect you now one thing to note with these vests if I pan the camera down is you will see that it kind of stops a bit short now part of that is just my shirt being baggy um, but this particular vest stops about here on my chest so it doesn't cover quite all of my belly um, important thing to note is some police vests they got rid of only came to about here and they were designed to give you more mobility but obviously it meant you could get shanked in your stomach or your gut so um, they've obviously changed that over time and made them longer but what you can also do is buy one for somebody of a slightly taller size than yourself um, assuming shoulder wise it's not going to be too big if you get one that's just a little bit extra in length it's not going to matter um, now I wouldn't publicly wear this on top of what I'm wearing like now, what I'd actually do when I used to wear one to work was to have a vest or a t-shirt on and then I'd have a coat on over the top of the Kevlar vest, the reason being that to a passerby you might look a bit chubbier than usual of course unless they know you properly they wouldn't real even realise that at all, um, especially in the winter you know you can have a fleece over it, any sort of coat, nobody can tell you've got it on underneath there but it all protects you because um, I've had a few weird comments on people saying like, oh you look like a drug dealer if you've got a Kevlar vest and I don't think anybody's you know, um, wanting to protect themselves from being stabbed or shot is actually a drug dealer but there you go um, I don't think you're a hard man for not wanting to have a vest on and get stabbed I don't think you're very hard when you're dead from being stabbed in the chest several times to be honest uh, but there you go, that's the mentality some people have so yeah, as I said these are basically just a completely passive defence item They you know, there is no way these are an offensive thing. I know in some countries they actually ban civilians from owning vests like this. Another option if you're interested is old military flak jackets, although the problem with a lot of those is I've seen when I've looked on eBay, lots of them are sold without the liners. So you'd actually have to track one down with the liner in or know which, you know, like type of Kevlar panels fit it properly. If you're going to do that, it depends if it's ballistic nylon or Kevlar. Obviously Kevlar is better, it's what um, succeeded at ballistic nylon. Um, but again, it depends, for example, with Kevlar, as far as I'm aware, the ratings go A, then the number, and then an A again. So, level 2A, level 2, level 3A, and then in theory level 3, but I don't think you can get level 3 vests that aren't really, really bulky. Um, you can also get Kevlar vests, and again, this is if you want to spend more money, that are designed to look like very slim-fitting kind of clothes. 
Um, again, that you're going to have to pay more for it because police budgets wouldn't cover anything like that. Police budgets cover the kind of very versatile, strong ones that would, you know, go over the top of your regular clothes like this one does. Um, so I said it will protect you from knife blades due to the kind of chainmail on it. And I can, if I feel on there, I can actually feel the texture of the chainmail under this. Um, you can definitely feel that if you actually feel inside the thing. Um, Kevlar can degrade if it gets wet, but I've noticed with these vests they actually keep the Kevlar panels in a waterproof bag, so that's simple or fixed. Um, and if you look at my other videos, you can see just how tough some of the panels are in these vests. Um, so, you know, I would have good confidence in wearing this. Obviously, the vest does not protect areas it does not cover, so this particular vest would not cover my neck from being stabbed or slashed, or my arms, you know, anything like that. Um, just to point out, because some people seem to forget that and then say, oh, but you recommended a vest that didn't protect people's neck. But the thing is, if you were being attacked, you're going to either run away or fight back. You're not going to just keep letting somebody stab you till they get a lucky hit. But the point is, if somebody just quickly pulls out a knife and whacks it into your chest, um, the vest should save your life. So, as I said, I'm just recommending these now more than ever, in a sense, because of the UK violent crime rate going up, and it seems, you know, less and less being done about it. So apologies if you're in the police and you actually do do a proper good job, but, you know, just due to all of the um, social media policing and whatever else, it seems that, you know, police resources could certainly be spent in a better way. I'm sure if you're an honest cop, you'd actually believe in that as well. So there we go. Um, the ex-police vests are very good. As I said, they can protect you from lots of pistol rounds. Obviously not rifle rounds or anything like that. Probably buckshot from a shotgun, I'd imagine. Certainly birdshot. Um... And as I said, just like knives and blades and things like that. So they're well worth getting, especially the second-hand police ones, which end up being about 30 to £40 pounds online. Um, if that saves your life, that's a very good deal in my opinion.